Hi everybody. So in this video, we're going to look at the negative binomial distribution. So we're going to work through two examples and then an exam style question. And if you want to work along with me, you can download a copy of a PDF from my website. I'll leave a link below. So a negative binomial distribution models the number of trials needed to achieve a fixed number of success. We say that X, this is our random variable, is distributed with a negative binomial. This R is the number of successes and P is the probability of success. And we're given this probability function in the Edexcel formula booklet to work out the probability of our random variable equaling any observed value. And throughout this video, I'll show you how we use this. Okay, so for example one, we're given that the random variable X is distributed with a negative binomial with six successes. So this is our value of R and a probability of success 0 0.4. This is our value of P. Part one, we've been asked to work out the probability that we get our six success on the eighth goal. So this is when X equals eight. So all we need to do is substitute the values R, P and X into our equation. So we get X minus one, which is seven, R minus one, and R is six, so this will be five, multiplied by P to the R. Now this P to the R tells us we've had six successes, each with a probability of 0 0.4. So this will be 0.4 to the 6, or p to the r. And if we've had 6 successes, and there's 8 goals, then 2 of them must be in a fail. And this is the 1 minus p to the x minus r. This will be probability of a fail, 0 0.6, and this would have happened twice. We know this works because the 6 add for 2 will be the total number of goals, 8. We can work this out on a calculator. We've got seven choice five times 0 0.4 to the six times 0 0.6 squared. And this gives us 0 0.0310 to four DP. So for question two, the probability of X equaling 10. So this means we have our six success on the tenth goal. Well, we've got x minus one, so ten minus one is nine. Then we've got the r minus one, which is five. We would have had six successes, so that would be not point four to the power of six. And if we have ten goals and six of them have been a success, then the fails would be not point six to a power of four. And then we can work all of this out. This is the nine choice five. And then we get 0 0.0669, again to four DP. And then for part three, the probability of X being less than or equal to seven. So if we've had six successes, and we need to get the final success on seven or less goals, then the probability of X being less than or equal to seven can only be the probability of X equaling six, which means we get six successive passes, or the probability of X equaling seven. If X does equal six, that means we would have had six successive passes. And that would be 0 0.4 to the power of 6. If x equals 7, we can use a probability function. This will be 7 take away 1, and then r take away 1, multiplied by p to the r, multiplied by 1 minus p, to be x minus r, which is 1. So 0 0.4 to the power of 6, and then working out x equals 7, we get 0 0.0368. 
and adding these two together, 0 0.0410. Okay, let's try another question. So for question two, we're told that IV for the fair 600 dice, and we're asked to find the probability that she throws the five for the fourth time on her eighth throw. And then for part B, that she throws the five for the third time on the seventh throw. So it's perhaps you want to try questions A and B yourself. Okay, so welcome back. So for part A, we'll say that X is distributed with a negative binomial. We have four successes, so R equals four, and the probability of a success is one six. And then we need to state the random variable X. So X is the random variable, the number of attempts needed for four fives. And we want to work out the probability of x equaling the 8. So using our function, we've got x minus 1. So 8 minus 1 is 7. And choice r minus 1, which is 3. We would have had 4 successes, so 1 6 to the power of 4. And if we have 8 goals and 4 of them are a success, then we'll have a fail to the power of 4 because the 4 and the 4 may be 8. And we can work this out and we get 0 0.0130 to 4dp. Then for part B, we need to change our distribution because we've got a different number of successes. This is now where i equals 3. So we'll say, y is distributed with negative binomial i is three and the same probability so a probability of y equaling seven so we get our first success on the seventh go this will be six choice two multiplied by one six to the three times five six to the power of four we can work this out and we get 0 0.0335. Okay. Let's try one more question. So in example three, we're told that Alex is playing a series of chess games with his friend. And the probability that Alex wins any particular game is 0.6. For part A, find the probability that Alex wins his fourth game on the sixth attempt. For part B, Find the probability that Alex wins his third game on the fifth attempt, given that he won the first game. And then for part C, find the probability that Alex wins at least seven out of the first ten games. So do you want to try these questions yourself? So for part A, we need to define our distribution. We'll say that X is distributed negative binomially. We're told that R is 4. And the probability of success is 0 0.6. And we want the probability of x equaling 6. And this will be 5 choice 3 multiplied by the 0.6 to the power of 4 multiplied by the 0.4 to the power of 2. And this gives us 0 0.2074. And then for part B, if we list the five games, so we've got games one, two, three, four, and five, we're told that it wins game one. So all we're really looking at are four games. And we want its final win on the last game. So we can say that Y is distributed with a negative binomial Within the next four games, we need two wins because he won his first game. So R is two and the probability of success is 0 0.6. So the probability of Y equaling four because there's four games will equal three choice one of 0 0.6 to be two 
we need two more wins and multiply by 0.4 squared then we can work this out and we get 0 0.1728 then for part c find the probability that alex wins at least seven out of the first 10 games now we're not specified when he wins his last game then this must be a normal binomial so we can say that w is distributed binomially we've got 10 trials and a probability of 0 0.6 and we want the probability of w being at least 7 so this is greater than or equal to 7 which is the same as 1 minus the probability of w being less than or equal to 6 and we can work this out using the binomial cd so we get 1 minus 0 0.6177 and this gives us 0 0.3823 okay well thank you very much for watching i hope you found that useful if you did find that helpful please like and subscribe and you can download the full lesson and the pdf like company to this video from my website mrmathematics.com i'll leave a link in the description below